table? Table call. Okay, does it hang of it yet? <laughs> the, only, the, only, the only thing you're going to remember is that uh, our marine biologists are very specialized people. And being a specialist in a subject means you learn more and more about the lesson. That big coral you see, that down the side with this, that's the cascading down the side, that's the leaf coral. It's one of the, uh, the very finest of all the corals. The polyps is the smallest. Don't mistake it for the uh, table corals, which are the little platforms to give the side. Now this is supported underneath by a single limestone stem. And as you come along here, you'll see the difference. Looking up slightly up on the reef, you'll see a bit of leaf coral. As you come down to that more reddishy brown one there, with a little Rastafarian uh, hairstyle, not not there. That's actually um, a table coral. Like it's got a surface a bit like a bit of nails. Sometimes the leaf coral can be tightly gathered, like a carnation. Okay, that's really quite so romantic for the cabbage. Um, but uh, it's uh, another one. Oh, look at this one here. This is another one of the soft corals. You see it? It's like porridge. That from now on is coralis porridges. Very value of reason. This is actually one of the soft corals. Now, the soft corals and the hard corals, it's the more soft coral. They're the golden ones there. And the spaghetti coral down there, of course. Again, nice plate of spaghetti there. There, there's no love lost between the soft corals and the hard corals. Unfortunately, when you see the soft coral run over yeah, the top of the hard really coral like that, so it's actually killing off the hard coral like underneath. You'll find these soft corals tend to be more on the top of the reef. If you bend down and look over the top there, you see how flat it is on the surface, and you see some of the soft corals on top. The reason that soft coral can survive better than the hard coral, the hard coral, if it spends more than a couple of hours out of the water, will bleach and die off. Whereas the soft coral produces its own sunblock. And that sunblock, or sun protection, is going to 50%, the 50 plus protection value. Look at the end of that tent. You can use that if you find yourself deserted on a, or shipwrecked on a deserted island somewhere in the, in the uh, tropics. You just go down to the water's edge, rub your hand in the soft, gooey, soft coral, wipe that all over your body, and you've got to look That's, that's whip coral. That's related to the black coral you find at, at lower depths. You know, there's something you use for jewelry. But because that's found in shell, it's always worth sitting down there a bit of sand in to make it a bit heavier. Uh, but look at the other side there. You've got stag on a branch and on the right hand side. See right down there? You're looking straight into it. See the wavy, wavy blue side? Yeah. You're looking up, and you see another little platform coral is getting out there. Another type of staghorn coral, the, the Christmas tree staghorn down there. See it? There's two yellow fish out there, the way out the right hand side, with black and white stripes, that's Romeo and Juliet at the reef. So you'll see one, you'll always see another one. And if you take one away, just like in Shakespearean tragedy, uh, the other one will die a couple of days later. Where are the black and white stripes? The black and yellow with the fish. Bit of tragedy, bit of romance, yeah. bit, of, bit of comedy, you know. Just get out there and think, oh, look at the parrot fish out there on the right hand side, look at that one. That's a mock parrot, he's wearing his kilt. And looking at your left hand side, look at that big coral up there. There's one big coral, looks like a big rock. Our air is rock about the coral reef. Now what's unusual about that, that's one single colony. That's one of the slowest growing corals. Same with those other big ones, the big blue one up there, and also on the right hand side, the nice one yeah. as well. Look like a big golf ball. They only grow at one to two millimeters of growth a year. So those ones back there are maybe a thousand years old. Here, on top of this, this uh, stag one, not a big stag one. See what it looks like footprints in it? That's not actually for things, or for hope not, it's pretty big. Uh, that's actually uh, done by the trigger fish. Now, the trigger fish is the dawn part of the reef. The rest is very dense skeleton. Now, if you took a core sample out of one of those big boulder corals there, you then have a really very accurate uh, weather chart for the last thousand years or so, depending on the corals, of course. By what happens if you pick it, you put it under a, look at that blue stag on the light right hand side. If you put it under an ultraviolet light, you actually see rings that means in the tree. And these actually relate to uh, color. Now this unusual coral that we're going over just now, this is one that we're going over the right hand side. See the color of it? It's just a sort of, you know, purpley blue color. Bring that closer to the surface and it starts getting more red, more burgundy color. Now the reason why that happens is the water itself acts like a color filter. The more light you have below the surface, the more color you'll see. The blues are very vibrant because that's the last color you lose as you go down through the water color. And that's why uh, the uh, water's obviously blue. But that golden leaf coral out there on the right hand side is a tinge of green to it. But when you get back to the surface, it's a bright golden color. 
looks sort of uh, very deep there. And until you look up, you see how close it is to the surface. Bearing in mind, we just announced my night, and you can see there it's flat on top. And but here we don't have sea traps. Yeah, looking out from the bottom, you'll be able to pick it out. But there's a little coral out there with a that top knot again. You know, with a little sort of um, it's actually starfish. It looks like a bit dreadlocks. It's um, one of the most successful life forms on Earth. Then. It hasn't changed shape or anything about it for lasting up to 1,600 years. As far as it's concerned, it's reached perfection. And, uh, it's pretty, pretty apt for North Queensland up here in Australia, which is sits around there, waves its arm, waiting for food to come to it, and it doesn't need to do too much effort into it. It's trouble, as we think. James Cook was the first person to uh, discover the reef that uh, made a record of it, shall we say. And uh, it was really him that followed the Great Barrier Reef. They seemed to kind of pile up and swing for them. We'll get to the end as well. Um, the, uh, well, we didn't kind of find it by saying we discovered the reef. We actually ran into the reef. And it was about uh, oh, 16 miles north east of here. We discovered uh, in Deborah Reef. Oh, there's a big fish sitting in that plate for us. Yeah, there's something there. You can see the... Thank you. 